Hi, everybody. My name is Liana, and I'm an alcoholic. Liana. Thanks, really. I'm very humbled and grateful to be here with all of you today. It's my first time at this meeting. It's a big meeting. Thanks. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how I got here, and I'll keep that brief because I do want to talk about the 12 steps. Um, I was born in Korea, and I was adopted when I was 18 months old, and I grew up in a little town in northwest Indiana, and it was hard for me because everyone was white, kind of like this room, but, um, <laughs> well, almost, uh, but I mean, finding anyone of color was hard, and it I'm not saying that's what made me an alcoholic by any means, but it was very hard because I felt so different and so alone. Uh, my parents were wonderful. I mean, my dad, heck, he still lives with us. But, um, you know, it, it, I just, I found alcohol at the age of 15. And I'll tell you, that was my very first spiritual awakening because I never found anything like that before in my life that had the power to take away my fear, my um, feelings of inferiority, my self-hatred. I felt so ugly and so just, I hated myself. And I hadn't even really, I don't know why I hated myself so much at that. I was only 15, you know, my grow, I just felt so inadequate and like I was never good enough. And no one ever told me that. I just felt that way inside. And I know we all do. Um, so if you're new, try to relate with what, I mean, the feelings. Because we all get here, I think, in different ways with out, different outside circumstances. But hitting bottom is, you know, hitting bottom is an inside job. It's about how you feel inside. And if you pulled all of us together, we would all have the same insides. Um, so I found this miraculous thing at the age of 15 that took away all that. It, it gave me courage, it, it gave me uh, strength. It, it, it did for me what I couldn't do for myself. If you read the promises, you know, and substitute alcohol for that when it was working for you, the same, I mean, I did know a new freedom and a new happiness that I had never known before. It was, it was amazing to me. So of course I, I, I chased that for as long as I could, and obviously it became a problem later for me, but I, it did so much for me that I really didn't care what it was doing to me and to the people around me. It, 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 because I'd never found anything like that. Fortunately, I have found something like that since. Um, you know, just one little story, and I don't know why, but it sticks out in my mind. You know, I, I, I obviously I went through high school, college. I uh, got married. We had three kids. And I remember... Um, when my kids were, they were five, two, and, or, I'm sorry, two, they were all below the age of five. There were three of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, and so I'm like, but I was laying, I remember I was laying on the couch and I passed out, and it was noon. It was noon, and I remember I was laying on the couch, and I was, my two-year-old was, wait, woke me up. And I came to, and I remember just looking dead in his eyes because I was right, at, right there at his level because I was laying on the couch. And he woke me up because he was hungry. It was noon. I have three little kids running around the house doing I don't know what, and I'm passed out on the couch at noon. And I just remember thinking to myself, you are such a piece of garbage. Who does that? What kind of mom does that with her kids? And the sad thing, or, you know, I went through that hell and that horror for the three more years. I didn't get sober for three more years after that. And um, I just kept feeling worse and worse and worse. My bottom, you know, did not consist of losing. I, I still had my marriage when I got here. Um, I never lost a job over drinking. Um, and I drank on the job a lot. I, I, I've always worked in restaurants. But that was kind of acceptable in that industry. Um, I've never been arrested. Not sure why, because I drank and drove all the time with my kids in the car, with my friends' kids in the car. I really didn't care. Um, and I, I don't know, for some reason, I just never thought anything was going to happen. And thank God nothing ever did. But, you know, there were a lot of things that should have happened that never did, but that's just not part of my story. But like I said before, 
Hitting bottom is not about that stuff. I, however, for whatever reason, we all get here, but it's the insides that I was dying inside, and I, I couldn't stand it another day. So, I mean, when I got sober, I actually got sober in the Cleveland Akron area. We were living there at the time. We've moved around quite a bit. Um, and I, I just want to let you guys know how very fortunate you are to be in this area with these types of meetings, with big book step study meetings, because I've never been exposed to this before. Uh, we moved here from Milwaukee about um, back in October. Um, there were big book meetings, but nothing about nothing about working the steps out of the book. I, I was I've had a lot of different sponsors because of the moves and because, quite frankly, in the, my very beginning, in my first year of sobriety, I must have had five or six sponsors because I was never, I always fired them after they told me to do something I didn't like. <laughs> I did. I was very, I was, I wanted to be here, but I was, I was really unwilling to, I was one, I was really unwilling to listen and I still kind of thought I could do this myself, or I could figure this out on my own. But um, when I was in Wisconsin for the last couple couple years there, I really tried to get into this book. I knew the answers were in this book. I I, I knew that, but I didn't know how to go about finding it. I, I, the answers are there in black and white, but for some reason I didn't get it. I swear I. I must have listened to 50 different tapes on how to do the fourth step. I could not figure it out. I, I, I couldn't. And I know it's right there. And when my sponsor walked me through it, I, I get it. I get it. And I just, but it was so, I, I couldn't do it. And I tried to, spo I, I sponsored a lot of women in Wisconsin. And I tried to take them through this book. But I don't think I was I was as effective as I thought as I could be because I didn't have you know I can only give away what I have I I, um, I didn't have what I have today and but I did believe in this book and so when I moved here in October it was um, in all honesty I was really riddled with untreated alcoholism I mean I was all over page you know page 52 um, suffering from you know all of those bedevilments and you know restless irritable discontented I was so full filled with self-pity I was so uh, I was so miserable that I was here I did not want to move here I did not want to be here I didn't like your meetings I didn't like I didn't like them I, I really didn't and when I finally fortunately in the beginning or I think it was like November December's time I went to my first big book step study meeting in Natick, and I met my sponsor there. And that night, I asked her to sponsor me because I heard something in those rooms that I, you just don't, you know what, you guys know, you go to other meetings, you don't hear the message. I, I go to other meetings in Massachusetts, and I do not, I, I hear a drunk log for 20 minutes and then half a minute about recovery, half a minute about no talk of God, no talk of the steps. And and that's what I was really used to hearing. So when I got here and all everything was about the work and the result of the work, which is a relationship with God and how that has solved all your problems, I it, it blew me away. And I was so anyway, I got got working on the work with my sponsor. Um, I I did my fourth step. I think in about. Three months. It didn't take. It didn't take that long. It was a lot of writing. My book's about. My book's pretty thick, you know. And but I tell you what. If anybody's writing in here and hasn't finished, please do it because I was in in, in the sex part of the inventory, and for some reason at that point, and it's not because I was afraid to look at that. I actually looked at that when I started working on my resentments. I looked at a lot of that already, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But for some reason at that point, I was like, you know what, screw it. I don't, I'm not doing this. I don't, I don't like your meetings. I don't like the fact that I'm not allowed to speak. I have a lot to share, and you guys tell me I can't speak. I thought that was, I thought that was a load of crap. I thought it was, um, I thought, I thought, I don't know. I was just like, you know what, 
you know, it was fear. It was all fear. I didn't. I was actually afraid to even have to share at a meeting. As much as I wanted to talk, I didn't want to talk. Because what would you think when I actually opened my mouth? I was actually afraid. I really was. I was afraid of having to chair a meeting. I was afraid of having to find people. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't know that many people in Big Book Step Study. I'm not going to be able to find any. These are things that I was thinking about that were like literally keeping me from even finishing the work. And it wasn't even that I was that worried. I, I had already looked at a lot of my stuff and the resentments. So it wasn't that. It was just, but, and thank God, I mean, I, just, I called my sponsor and I told her these things. And she's like, you know, you just have to quit self-sabotaging yourself. Knock it off. Just finish the work. So I got to tell you, uh, you know, I've, <laughs> it seems like I've been untreated my, my whole 11 years of sobriety because... When I was working on my fourth step, during this time when I was finishing up the sex inventory, my husband came to me and told me he really didn't know if he wanted to be with me because he couldn't stand the way, basically the, the way I was. I had no idea, no clue. I thought, I thought our marriage was perfect. <laughs> That's how clueless I was. That's how blind I was. I had no idea. But it's because he went, he and my kids have gone along with whatever I've wanted for our entire marriage. My my husband has, and you know my kids since. It's like whatever mom wants. And that you'd have to walk around on pins, you know, just don't upset mom. This is at 11 years. I had really no, I had no recovery. I, I really didn't. I thought I did. But I didn't. And it was so eye-opening. And I tell you what, God puts, the way God worked through my fourth and fifth step, especially my fifth step, it just really blows me away because I can really see how he worked. I don't think I would have seen what I really needed to see and felt it at a gut level if my husband hadn't told me that. Because it, it, it impacted me so much more. Because, you know, the steps, I mean, everything's so spiritual in nature that I, I can read it on paper, I can read my fifth step to my sponsor, but unless I'm really getting it in my heart and in my soul, which is what's broken in me, I, I couldn't really see it. And, man, I saw it. I saw it. I saw the self-centeredness and the selfishness. i never seen it before in my life. I read it a million times. I tell people about it. I tell people, you know, your problem is your selfish self-centeredness. I knew that about myself. I didn't know it, though. I didn't know it in my heart. And so that work, that work, it, it just really, it, it, it really amazed me. Um, and so anyway, um, I started making amends. And the funny thing is, oh, another thing, I really didn't want to finish my uh, fifth step, or I didn't want to finish my fourth because I didn't want to make some of those amends. I was afraid. I was afraid. I knew if I finished that, I would have to make those amends. And I wasn't there. But the thing is, you know, you're only where you're supposed to. I mean, I had to do four and five to get to the point that, and God moved me. God did it. I didn't, I really, I just read stuff and he came, because I was able to get rid of all that garbage that was standing between me and him, he was able to come in. And I really, I, transformed the way I think. Transformed. Because this whole thing, I mean, the spiritual awakening is about change. Changing the way you think. And um, I couldn't do that on my own. You know, I, it says, it like, if a mere code of morals and ethics would have been enough, we would all changed a long time ago. I wanted to be a better person. I wanted to be a better mom, a better wife, a better employee. You know, I didn't want to steal from my employ. Well, I don't know. Apparently, I did because I did. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I wanted to be a better person. But just wanting to be a better person and having, you know, these ideas in my that wasn't enough. I needed God's help, and in doing this work, um, He's helped me immensely to the point that, you know, I'm I'm headed back to Wisconsin actually um, next week, and I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks. And like I said, I've lived in a lot of states in between here and Wisconsin. And I'm actually, I have it mapped out, <laughs> the amends I have to make. 
And these were amends that I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that, which was holding me back from finishing my fourth and fifth step. Um, I want to do those today. I've changed. It's a totally changed. But I, like I said, I didn't do it. I, 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 I really can't take any credit. He did it. Um, I just had, I had a lot of work to do to get to that point. But the actual revolution inside me is a God thing. Um, so to talk about the 12th step, I have a sponsee. I have my first sponsee, which I'm really excited about. And I know, I know, um, there's a, part, a quote in the big book where it says, I'm, I'm going to have to paraphrase a little bit, our very, our very lives as ex-problem drinkers depends upon our constant thought of others and how we may best meet their needs. Our very lives. And I take that to heart. I mean, I, ha I, I, need to, I need to sponsor people. I need to work with other people. Because, and I told her, I was like, she's like, thank you so much. You've helped me so much so far. And I'm like, no, no, you've helped me. Because when I'm helping you, I'm not thinking about me. And that's the whole deal. If I'm, I gotta, it's out of self, out of self. I just gotta get out of myself. And that helps me immensely. And to take somebody through the book and talk to them and help them and just just to, just to have somebody other than myself to think about is a miraculous thing. I mean, and I I said to God, you know, when you think I'm ready, because my my sponsor told me I wasn't allowed to sponsor anyone while I was going through this process. She's like, you have nothing to offer, which really really pissed me off. I'm like, yeah, I have a lot to offer, but. <laughs> No, I, I have a lot more to offer now, I would say, um, definitely, from doing this work. And um, really, nothing sell, saves a day than intensive work with al other alcoholics. It really doesn't. Um, and the other, you know, the other part of uh, the 12th step, practicing the principles in all our affairs, that, I think it's really, it's really easy to be nice and loving and kind in an AA meeting, for the most part. You know, unless someone does something I don't want them to do or, you know, or says something I don't like. But I can still remain pretty loving and tolerant in an AA meeting because, I don't know, it's always been easy for me. But it's taking it out of these rooms and practicing the principles, especially at home, especially at home with, you know, my husband and my kids and my dad who... You know, it's, it, that's not easy, or with employees, or even, you know, getting in the car and getting out on the road to, to, practice, to practice the principles. But, um, like I said, this, this program has truly changed my life. Um, and if you are, like I said, if you're working on that fourth and fifth, I, I beg of you, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. It, it is life-changing, it is life-saving. I mean, you can. I, I could have continued just hanging in there one day at a time, just not drinking, which is kind of what happened. I mean, I wasn't like really dying to drink or anything like that, but I wasn't living. I wasn't living. And the book also talks about you know being able to go places where alcohol is served. I I know we talked about that um, in the book today. You know, I'm I'm working in a restaurant now, and we had wine training. So literally, they were trying like six or seven bottles of wine. Our staff was, and I have to just let the I have to let it go by me. I'll smell it, but I'll tell you what: when I was new, I couldn't go around alcohol. It no, no, I, I couldn't be around it. Um, I wouldn't go out with my husband because my husband doesn't drink a lot, but he'll he'll have a beer or something. And you know, today I can. I have been placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected. Really, like it, it, it went by, oh, that's nice. But you know what, I look at work, like if I can have someone order a glass of wine that actually helps me, it's part of my job to sell. So it's okay for me to be there. There's a reason that I'm there. Um, I, don't go to, I, I, I don't go to bars. I don't go places where alcohol is served unless I have a real legitimate reason to be there because there's no reason for me to be there. And really nothing good could come, I, I, you know what I mean? So. I don't know, I'm coming going off on a, but anyway, I guess that's about all I have for you. Um, it does work. Please finish if you're not, if you haven't. So I guess I'm done. <laughs>